By default, Hibernate loads all entity objects in read write mode. It performs dirty checks to detect changes it needs to persist in your database for each of them. That makes entities very easy to use, but it also creates an overhead if you don't want to change anything. Hi, I'm Torben Janssen. I'm here to show you how to build incredibly efficient persistence layers with Hibernate and Spring. Subscribe and click the bell to get new videos every week. And also don't forget to like this video if you found it helpful. That helps me reach more people with it. You can avoid the described overhead by setting Hibernate's read-only hint on your query. By declaring a query as read-only, you enable Hibernate to perform a few internal optimizations. If Hibernate knows that you don't change the fetched entity objects, it doesn't have to perform any dirty checks on them. And if it doesn't do that, it also doesn't need to keep dehydrated copies of the fetched objects to detect these changes. This reduces the memory footprint of your session and the effort of all flush operations. Let's get into the IDE and take a closer look at this. As I explained in my previous video about query hints, which you will find in the description, you can set them in similar ways on all types of queries. The easiest option is to call the setHint method on the query and type query interface. This method expects the name of the hint as a string and its value as an object. The name of the read-only hint is org.hibernate.readonly. As you can see in this example, you can provide it as a string or use the read-only constant of Hibernate's query hints class. The supported values of this hint are true and false. False is the default value. If you're using a named query, you can also set the hint as part of the query definition. Hibernate will then automatically apply it to your query when you instantiate it. And if you're using the find method on the entity manager interface, you can provide a map with your hints as the third parameter. In all three cases, the result is the same. The query hint doesn't affect the creation and execution of the query. You also don't see any differences in your application's log or the database. Hibernate only excludes the fetched entity objects from all dirty checks and doesn't store any internal copies of them. You're probably not surprised if I tell you that you should never change an entity object that you fetched in read-only mode. As explained earlier, Hibernate excludes these objects from all dirty checks to reduce the memory footprint and speed up flush operations. Due to this optimization, Hibernate will not detect that you changed one of the read-only objects. It will not trigger any lifecycle state change or SQL update statement for it. Unfortunately, Hibernate also doesn't prevent you from changing a read-only object. So it's up to you to ensure that the result of a read-only query is never used in a context that tries to change the returned objects. You can see all of that when we execute the test case here. I first execute a query with a read-only hint to get a chess player object. In the next step, I change the first name of the player and commit the transaction. Without the read-only hint, Hibernate would detect the change during a flush operation before committing the transaction. But because the read-only hint excluded the chess player from all dirty checks, Hibernate doesn't detect the change and doesn't perform an SQL update statement. If you're using a Hibernate version older than 5.4.11, you should be aware of bug 11958. In these older versions, the read-only query hint didn't have any effect if you set it for the entity manager's find method. Hibernate then still included the entity object in dirty checks and kept a dehydrated copy of the fetched object. Since Hibernate 5.4.11, this bug is fixed and the read-only optimization also works when you're using the entity manager's find method. The read-only query hint is a small and straightforward performance tuning feature. It enables you to tell Hibernate which entity objects will not get changed by your business code. Hibernate can then exclude them from its dirty checks to improve the performance of flash operations and reduce the memory footprint of your current session. Okay, that's it for today. If you want to learn more about Hibernate, you should join my free member library. It gives you free access to a lot of member-only content like cheat sheets, ebooks, and a free video course. I'll add the link to it to the video description below. And if you liked today's video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe below. Bye.